we are in the middle of deriving total least squares. And what we have settled on in the previous lecture is we are going to minimize now the shortest distance instead of the vertical or the horizontal distance between a point and a line or a point and a parabola or whatever it's going to be later on. So we came up with something that it looks promising. It looks to be linear in the unknown. There's a quadratic term in there. And so now let's start turning the crank to, to define the, the quadratic error function and try to minimize it using the same tools that we've done before. So let's first of all now add in all the points. So I've got ax plus by. Remember that a and b is, is, corresponds to the vector that is perpendicular to this uh, uh, line, which again is uh, centered at the origin um, because we're working on the simplified version right now. All right, I want to minimize the sum of all of these uh, shortest distances between each point and the line. We determined that the square of that is equal to the dot product between the data point, x1, y1, and the parameterization of the line in terms of that perpendicular vector, a and b. So x1, y1 times a, b is delta 1. x2 times y2 times a, b is delta 2, and so on and so forth. So if I pack in my matrix now, it looks a little bit different than least and weight and least squares and weighted least squares. If I pack into my matrix not x and 1, but x and y, and multiply that by the unknown a and b, then I get my new deltas. Not the vertical distance, not the horizontal distance, but the perpendicular or shortest distance. So this matrix looks a little bit different. But this looks great now, because now this looks very familiar. I have a matrix times my unknown. That gives me my deltas. And what do I want to do to these deltas? I want to square them, and I want to sum them. Well, I know how to do that. That should be pretty easy. So let's do that next. So delta is equal to x, matrix x, different than last matrix, right? It's got the x's and the y's, not x's and 1's, times my unknown vector u, which has a, b in it. e of u, my quadratic error function, is what? The sum of the squares of these. So take that delta vector over there, transpose it, and multiply it by itself. That gives me the sum of the squares. And that's the same as taking the vector norm and squaring it. Same thing we did with least squares. And now I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I've got a quadratic error function in u. It's equal to a vector norm of a matrix times u. And the only difference is I don't have that minus y that I had before because I simply parameterized the line differently, which I did in order to be able to compute these perpendicular or shortest differences, distances rather. But this looks pretty good. I should be able to minimize this because that's a paraboloid, a parabola or paraboloid. Well, in our case, it's a paraboloid because of the two parameters. So let's go ahead and turn the crank and compute some derivatives. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to compute the derivative with respect to u. So let's go ahead and do it. What is the derivative of that error with respect to u? Well, the 2 comes out. We get the x transpose up front the same way we did before, times x u, and that's equal to uh, 0. All right, that looks pretty familiar. I just don't have that minus y lugging around. So let me go ahead and just get rid of the 2 again because there's 0 on both sides. And so now I have u is equal to what? Well, once I get rid of the u, I've just got x transpose x, which will be a 2 by 2 matrix. And what do I have to do? I just have to multiply both sides by that x transpose x. And then I get u equals 0. Crap. What happened? Well, I had a 0 on that side, but I don't have that minus y there, which is what was hitting it before on the least squares. And so u equals to 0. Well, does that make sense, first of all? Let's go back to the quadratic error function and see if that actually makes sense. So I don't, we did everything right here, so let's go back to here. Let's see. Well, if I put in a 0, 0 here, that's what I'm saying my solution is, what is my error? Well, if I put a 0, 0 here, my error is 0. It's actually perfect. All the deltas go to 0. So in fact, everything I did makes perfect sense because if I put a 0 in here, my every single delta goes to zero, and I'm done. But I have a degenerate solution. And I've also not respected something that I said was going to be true about my parameterization of the line. Do you remember what it was? Do you remember when we had the shortest distance? We had on the top the absolute value of ax plus by. And what did we have in the denominator? We had the square root of a squared plus b squared. And what did we say? We said, let's assume 
that our a and b is a unit vector. That is, the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. But when I put a 0 into here, that's violating that assumption. Because the, ve the, the vector, the norm of this is not 1 if those are both zeros. And so I need to condition this um, a, um, a minimization in order to avoid that degenerate solution, which is perfectly fine in terms of optimizing, but is not respecting one of our assumptions that sort of fell through the cracks somewhere. So we have to add a constraint. We now want to minimize this quadratic error function subject to an, uh, uh, the assumption that u, which is made up of a and b, has the property that it is unit, no, unit length. That is the square root of the, the, two, the square of the two components is equal to 1. How do we do that? Well, that's something new now. OK, so now we see a difference, right? Up until now, we were just chugging along. Everything was fine. We defined something we wanted to minimize. We set up a quadratic error function and went to, went to do that last step, that optimization. And something went sideways because we have this new assumption. And this new assumption doesn't come in quite as nicely as we might like it to because it's not about computing derivatives anymore. We did exactly what we were, the, the, the optimization did exactly what we were told to do. It found the u that minimized this. Put a 0 in there, and the error is 0. So now we've got to add in a, a, a constraint. And there's two ways to do this. There's a so-called Rayleigh quotient, which says instead of minimizing e of u is equal to vector norm x u squared, please minimize the, the same thing on the top and the numerator, but, but add to the denominator the vector norm of u squared and penalize things that move away from unit length. Because if u has unit length, then that will be 1, and that would be the um, the, the penalty associated with deviating from that. We could derive all that. There's a second way to do it, um, the so-called Lagrange multipliers. I'm going to derive it this way because you'll hear about Lagrange multipliers quite a bit, and it's good to know what they are. So now what I'm going to I'm going to create a new error function that has two parameters. The u, that's what I care about, the parameters of the line, and a lambda, which is the so-called Lagrange multiplier. And this error looks something like this. Uh, vector norm x u squared, that's the same error as before. Minimize all of the perpendicular distances in the line. And then subject to the following constraint that the vector norm of u should be equal to 1. So I'm going to penalize deviations of u from 1 by this amount lambda. Now, I'm not, I could just say, well, I'll just pick lambda to be some big number and that'll penalize it, but there's no guarantee. I don't want to just get the vector norm of u close to 1 or near 1 or avoid zeros. I want this to be a hard constraint. I want to guarantee, in fact, that u will be unit length. And so we have to figure out what that lambda is, and that's part of the optimization. You can't just pick a number out of the hat. And so now our optimization has gotten a little trickier, but let's see where this takes us now. Now, the good news is, Everything is looking pretty clean here. I've got this quadratic in u, and yeah, I've got this extra term here I'm lugging around, my constraint, but it's also squared, and so that doesn't look too bad. Maybe I've got a chance of solving this. All right, now we've got a slightly different optimization. We want to optimize e of u comma lambda um, with our constraint on the distances and our Lagrange multiplier, which is enforcing the constraint that we assumed that u is unit length. Okay, now... Um, you don't, can't really see that this is still a parabolic surface, but I will tell you that it is. So let's try to crank through the differentiation. So there's a couple of parameters here, by the way. There's the u and the lambda. Let me start with u. I have to differentiate with respect to everything. So de du is pretty easy. This part is the same. 2 x transpose x u, same as before. And then let's take the derivative of this with respect to u. So that's 2 times lambda times u, and of course the minus 1 drops drops out. So that's not too bad. I've got 2 x transpose u plus 2 lambda u is equal to 0. There's a 2 here and a 2 here, because both were squared, of course. So that drops out because I'm setting everything equal to 0. And what I'm left with is x transpose x u is equal to minus lambda u. All right, let's see. Well, this doesn't really help me, because I don't know how to solve for u. And first of all, I don't even know what lambda is. So even if I could solve this for u, I don't know what to. But there's something really interesting about this equation. So what do I know about u from this equation? I don't know what it is, right? By the way, I know what x transpose x is. I'm trying to solve for u. I don't know what lambda is. But I do know something about u. This um, equation tells me, in fact, that u is an eigenvector 
of the matrix x transpose x. Let me remind you what an eigenvector is. An eigenvector of a square matrix is a vector that when you multiply that vector by the matrix, it's equal to a scaled version of the vector. By how much? Some eigenvalue. That's a, that's a scalar value there. Don't know what it is yet still. So u times this matrix is u scaled by some amount. So I now know that u is an eigenvector. Ah, that's good. I don't know what it is, but x transpose x is a two by two matrix. And there are two eigenvectors. So one of those eigenvectors is my solution, but which one? Is it the maximal eigenvalue eigenvector or the minimal eigenvalue eigenvector? And what happens if, by the way, I have more parameters here than just two? What if I have four? Which one do I pick? Don't know yet. I know it's one of those, but I need to figure out which one. How? Well, remember that we are trying to um, solve for u and for lambda, right? Because I remember I told you, I don't know what lambda is here. So now let's do the derivative of this with respect to lambda and see what it gets us to. All right, we know that u is an eigenvector, but we have to still make a choice. Which of the eigenvectors of that square matrix? Let's compute the derivative of our error with respect to lambda. Well, this should be pretty easy. There's no lambda in this term over here. So let's see, what is the derivative of this respect to lambda? Ah, well, that's easy. It's just vector, vector norm u squared minus 1. I'm going to write that as u transpose u. That's the same as vector norm squared. Minus 1 is equal to 0, which tells me that u transpose u is equal to 1. Well, that doesn't really help very much, does it? Um, I'm just sort of left with basically what my assumption was. u transpose u, vector norm is equal to 1. But let's see what happens when I combine this equation with this equation up here. So what I'm going to do is take this equation up here, which tells me that u is an eigenvector of the square matrix x transpose x, and I'm going to uh, left multiplied by u transpose. Why am I doing that? Well, I know that u transpose u is equal to 1. And if I left multiply um, here and on the other side over here, well, then this term is going to go away, and I'm going to be left with a lambda isolated. Ah, that's nice. Why? Because lambda I need um, up here, and I don't know what it is up here. So now let's see what we have. Lambda is equal to u transpose x transpose x u. I've just changed the parentheses a little bit, and you'll only see in a second why. All right. We're sort of getting somewhere or not getting somewhere. Um, what's the problem with this equation? Well, the problem is u, which I don't know, is embedded in here. And so I don't really seem to have gotten much insight. But this also looks really familiar. What is u transpose x transpose times x u? Well, u transpose x transpose is this matrix transposed. And so what's the transpose of matrix times itself? It's the vector, sorry, the transpose of a vector times itself is the vector norm squared. Ah, that sounds really familiar. That's what our error function is. So what is x u magnitude squared? Ah, it's x u transpose times x u. What's x u transpose? u transpose x transpose times x times u. That's what that is. Oh, this is cool. So when I took the derivative respect to lambda and I substituted that back in, what did I get? I got that lambda is the error I'm trying to minimize. Ah, well, what is lambda? It is our Lagrange multiplier, but according to this, it's also the eigenvalue associated with the eigenvector that is my solution. And what do I want to do? I want to minimize the error. And so what do I want? I want the lambda that is the minimal eigenvalue eigenvector. There's this amazing sleight of hand here, by the way. I didn't actually solve for u, and I didn't actually solve for lambda, but what I noticed is that with this Lagrange multiplier, my solution that minimizes the error is simply the minimal eigenvalue eigenvector of the matrix x transpose x. Beautiful, truly beautiful. If you ever wondered why eigenvectors were useful, here it is, total least squares estimation. We found out that our solution is an eigenvector, and we found out that, in fact, it must be the minimal eigenvalue eigenvector. Total least squares. By the way, notice something here with least squares, weighted least squares, and total least squares. I could have skipped all the intermediate steps. I could have done this very operationally. I said, hey, want to minimize this? Here's the equation. Want to minimize this? Here's the equation. Want to minimize this? Here's the total least squares of solution. By the way, let me remind you that we've seen minimal eigenvalue eigenvectors before when we did the homography. 
Yeah, and remember, I said I had that matrix times a vector is equal to zero. That's what we just did. And the reason we had to use total least squares and not least squares was because that zero on the right-hand side, you get a degenerate solution. The reason, by the way, I'm going through these steps is not to torture you, although it may feel like that sometimes. It's because the derivations matter. It's important to understand where these things come from. It's more than just plugging in an equation in your code and going, because there are assumptions here that you are making, and because if we want to apply these tools, if we want to expand on these tools, those derivations are incredibly important. Okay, least squares, weighted least squares, vertical distance. Total least squares, perpendicular distance. A Little bit more complicated, by the way, in terms of the derivation, but in the end, You've got a little two by two matrix, you compute the eigenvectors and you take the minimal eigenvalue eigenvector. It's actually pretty simple, not any more complicated in the end. And now we have one more thing to do, which is to implement that, and we'll do that when we come back.